Hey folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed. Well I hope you're all still okay out there in uh, COVID land. Uh, we're all getting through it uh, and hopefully uh, everyone will be okay. But what we're looking at uh, this time is uh, how to do bricks and uh, probably more importantly how to do the mortar on model brick buildings. And uh, it's it's a pretty easy thing to do really. I've, I've done it on uh, some little Nissan huts I made and they're, they're just over here on my uh, uh, airfield. Uh, we'll just have a look at these little Nissan huts. They're um, fairly easy to do and you can get quite a nice result I think. Not stuck down at this point in time but uh, you can still get a, a good idea of um, how they look and how the brickworks come up. And it's quite easy to achieve this effect and uh, you know you don't have to agonize about it and you don't have to think about painting each individual brick I mean you can if you want to but um, that's up to you all I'm going to show you is uh, or give you actually is the the tools or methods in the way I do it so uh, we'll have a look at that now now the most important thing to get right is the mortar and I would think if, if you've got some bits and pieces of kits that you're not really too interested in uh, I've got this particular piece. I've got a lot of odds and sods around, but uh, if you if you've got something like this which has a brick pattern in it and you don't really care too much about whether you use it or not, uh, it's good to practice on. So we're sort of jumping ahead here because the mortar I feel is the most important part of the whole bizzo. So if we can practice on something like this, you can start to get the confidence to move forward onto a good kit that you want to build. Now what I use for the mortar is no more gaps. Uh, it's just multi-purpose white and uh, it's as simple as that. It's straight from the tube and uh, that's what we're going to use and I'll show you how to do that. Right, I've just squeezed some out of the tube here, straight into my uh, little lid here. I'll use that for mixing. Now, not all mortar is uh, pure white. so. If you, just, if you don't want pure white mortar, and probably most of us don't, uh, what you can do is just add a bit of acrylic colour to the uh, no more gaps, and you can colour it to whatever you want. I mean, I'm putting a little bit of uh, black here, and we'll mix this like we were mixing paints to get um, a different colour. Now, you're not, not going to need much uh, colour to change the, uh, the shade of the, of the white. Um, no more gaps. So I've got a skewer here so I'll just get a bit of uh, paint on the end of that and just mix that in to the to the white and it's getting more of a grey tone to it now and if you add in small amounts you can control the process more easily. This lid's got an inner piece in it which is sliding around so we'll just take a bit more black Add that in. I want to sort of get a grey colour, a darker sort of colour, and that's coming along quite well. So we've got all that mixed up there. Just make sure it's thoroughly mixed. I mean, if you get some variation in it, you'll barely notice it once you start putting it on to the uh, onto the brickwork. Right, well, that's pretty good. That's sort of a grey, and we've done that quite easily now. You could uh, add a bit of yellow into that to sort of colour it up, or you could, instead of going with, with black in there, you could put a bit of red. It just depends on the area in and what sort of colour mortars that you would have. Now to start the process, we're going to use the old finger to put it on, but I've also got a couple of rags just beside me here. One rag is to um, wipe off the excess, and it's a dry rag. The other rag uh, I will put my finger into it uh, like this. I'll put my finger into the rag and then I'll put some water on the end and I'll use that to wipe off any excess that's on the brickwork. And the method is as simple as this. So remember this is just your, your throwaway plastic um, piece of kit that you didn't really want. And I would just do sort of a smallish section at a time. You can see how quick that's going on, just like that, because we can always come back and go over these sections if we need to. Now I'm taking the dry rag, 
and just wiping that off got it to that point there and now I'll get the uh, a bit of water on this other rag I've got a bottle here to do this you don't want it soaking wet just damp and we'll just go over that and wipe that off now I've got the the rag tight around the end of my finger, finger so that um, I don't want any part of the rag sort of dipping down into the um, the mortar recesses and pulling the mortar out and if any gets inside window frames or door frames you can uh, scrape that out later with a knife so there we are that's how quick it is folks and you know we'll do it we'll do a bit more just to uh, keep going you make sure you give your hands a good wash after this because um, you don't want this lugging up your hands we're in that uh, part of our lives now where hand washing is really important aren't we so we'll just put a bit more on there same process dry rag pull some of that off there now the first cloth is still damp if I can find the spot from the first bit we did we'll just wipe that off this is how easy it is folks now if there was paint on on this uh, wall if we'd painted the bricks it's still just as easy there's no big drama about this piece of cake to do it uh, if I can get the shine off it you can see the difference between the un the piece that's not done and, and the piece that I've done so that's what I suggest if you uh, get get a piece like this you practice on it now if I was to really make the, the, the cloth that I've got here quite wet. At this stage, I can probably wipe most of that off if I wanted to. Or even put it in a tub of water and wash it out because it hasn't really gone off yet. But after about 10 minutes or so, you're stuffed. So um, it goes off fairly quickly. So you've still got a bit of time to sort of take it all off and uh, start again if you want to. So hopefully that looks okay. We're getting a bit of shine on there, but that's the process. Now we'll use this piece here to um, show you how I do the painting. Uh, I use matte paints and I've got four different tones of brown here and I'll use each one in um, uh, sparingly. Uh, yeah, and the four different tones that are giving me a bit of variation in the brick. So what I'll do is I'll start with the, the darkest one. Now colour choice is completely up to you. So don't worry about asking me what colour did you use and all that sort of thing. It doesn't really matter. You find your colours and work away. But what you want is matte paints. You don't want gloss paints. It's got to be matte so you get a nice flat finish on it. So I've got uh, one can open here. Actually the lid is stuffed on this can. And I don't know, don't know whether I can repair the lid. But anyway, that's another story. So what I do with my first coat, this is pretty much the darkest brown I've got I just um, dab that on random all over the place and uh, yeah, no rhyme or reason to it, just all over the place, where it goes on a bit thick, come back and use those bits of paint to spread out into other areas so we just do it like this keep that process going and you'll notice that um, in some areas you can still see a bit of the orange coming through from this plastic it's pretty ordinary looking this you probably rem remember this from a, a magazine that was out a few years ago build a model railway in five minutes sort of thing anyway there you go so that's the first shade of brown. 
Now we're into our second tin, and this is a bit different again. I don't know whether you can actually see it in this light, but the same process, and, and go for the bits that you haven't put any paint on, and overlap some of the stuff you've already done. Just dab it on all over the joint. Eventually, we'll get all this covered. And it's important to to do the inside of the um, window frames and the door frames. So we'll just carry on dabbing it on. And there's another two colours to come as well. And this looks pretty rough and ready at the moment, but it will change. Right, we're up to the, uh, the last colour now. I've got three different uh, shades on there now. And um, I'm just adding this at random as usual over the brickwork. Now, you can go through and paint individual bricks if you feel like you need to do that. Um, that's up to you. This is a fairly quick method by comparison, and uh, I think it comes up okay. Right. Just sort of make sure that it's all sort of evenly sort of spread and not too obvious that it's there in sort of um, heavy areas of paint. And I'll do the insides of the um, the frames and everything with this as well. Right, folks, let's see um, four colours on there, and uh, we've got to wait. Till that dries, preferably overnight. Make sure it's nice and dry before you uh, have a go at it. Now, I did one earlier, which again is not 100% dry, but I think it looks better than, um, than that one. You can see that's the same method. That's how that's coming up. So um, yeah, we'll have to um, wait until everything's nice and dry before we go on to the next stage. Right, folks, it's uh, been drying overnight. This panel. And uh, I've added some yellow and a little bit of black into some um, no more gaps to give a sort of a slightly darkish, creamish um, effect on on the uh, no more gaps. So we'll just um, add some of that to the panel. Working it well in. This is a pretty fine grain. Uh, brick on here so it's the uh, mortise areas aren't quite as deep the mortise uh, courses aren't quite as deep as they were on the uh, practice piece Wipe it off a bit more. Very lightly. And we'll just leave that to uh, dry and we'll move on to the next section. I'm just trying to get off any sort of patchy bits now. It's still working away at it. There's um some tricky recesses here to get in and out of, but that's okay. I'm getting there. It's coming along. Sometimes you might even have to go over something the second time just to get the full effect, but um, that's how we're going at the moment. So. I'll clean that up a bit and uh, I'll come back to you. I'm just using a scalpel here to um, clean out the uh, window recesses and um, and the door. Just tidy it up a bit. And that's not too bad. Now that we've got to this stage, I, uh, I've got some chalk pastels and um, 
I've got a, a brown here so I'll add sort of colour to this uh, surface here just dabbing the pastel on here and there and uh, we'll take the excess off with the brush which sort of brushes it in at the same time and uh, we'll give it a slightly different tone here and there brush it well in folks, brush it well in starting to get that sort of dry dusty look about it that you get on brick uh, now a bit of black just the odd bit here and there and this is starting to look like a building that's been near a uh, especially a steam Loco railway for quite some time. That's the uh, how it's coming up. It's got that sort of distressed look about it. Uh, and here's the other side that hasn't been done. So it really uh, gives it a, a really weathered look, I feel. And that's all there is to it. You know, it takes a bit of time to do this, and uh, you know, it probably can be done better than what I've actually done it here. But um, that's essentially how it turns out. If we pull back a bit. So, folks, that's just a, I think a fairly easy method. Uh, the um, pastels actually make the difference in the end. And uh, I, I think you might enjoy having that as a, as a method you can use. And as I said, it's best if you've got um, scrap pieces around that you can use and practice on because it's, it's very much um, a method for uh, working out all the processes and understanding how they all work and, uh, and then get on to it. Okay, uh, I'll leave you with it. Cheers. Gourmet. Mm -hmm.